I'm talking agricultural, wheat, corn. This is a very big deal. I can very easily make the case for higher commodities prices. The reason for that is because Ukraine and Russia. Ukraine was able to export not the amount of wheat it used to export before Russia invaded it, but it was still able to, at least in the last year or so, export a lot of what it produces. And the world lives on wheat and corn. The deal with Russia, Ukraine, and Turkey to allow allow Ukraine to export wheat via waterway has expired. Russia's not renewing it. And now they view any ship leaving a waterway of a Ukrainian port as a military target. So no one's going in to pick up the wheat because it's not safe. And people are going to try to find a way to invest in this. And you're going to hear about these ETFs. In my opinion, they might not be the best way to do it unless you're literally looking to just maybe buy them one day, sell them the next day or buy in the morning, sell in the afternoon. That's what these are really for. There are a couple of exchange traded funds you may have heard about that track wheat, corn, soy. It's important to understand what these are. I could see these becoming very popular. This is really a perfect example of how geopolitics can merge with the economy and the stock markets. These are basically packages of futures contracts that are focused in one particular commodity. But if wheat's not moving enough to compensate for the time decay of the futures, you're losing money. And these are not meant to say, I'm going to buy this wheat ETF now, for example, and I'm going to hold on to it for the next six to 12 months, maybe two years, because I expect food prices to go up. I expect a lot of global food insecurity. That's not what these are for. These have to take short-term bets, get in, get out to trade the price of wheat using an exchange-traded funds.